Welcome back. Tax and spend. President Biden set to meet with congressional lawmakers this week to discuss the administration's proposed $4 trillion in spending plans. The president is also planning to hear from Republican senators, including West Virginia's Shelley Moore Capito, on a smaller alternative $568 billion infrastructure proposal. Joining me right now is Tennessee Senator, Senate Armed Services, Commerce, Judiciary and Veterans Affairs Committee member Marsha Blackburn. Senator, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks very much for being here. What are you expecting yes. in the White House meeting this week where the president will try to sell all of these plans that flood this economy with money and hike taxes uh, in the biggest tax increase in, in decades? Yes. And you know what I'm hearing from Tennesseans is they want to see the emphasis on infrastructure. And Senator Capito has done a great job leading the group coming forward with a bill that actually focuses on roads and bridges and highways and broadband, waterways. Uh, these are the things, Maria, that people want to see. Plus, they would like to see some regulatory relief and be able to move forward and repair these roads and bridges without being told by the federal government that they can't get in there and do it because of environmental concerns. Senator, I want to ask you about this fight over the $300 weekly unemployment supplemental yeah. uh, and whether or not they're going to be able to make this permanent. We saw the jobs mm -hmm. numbers on Friday. As you know, we were expecting a million jobs created in the month of <clears throat> April. We actually got 266,000 jobs. Is that because people are making more to stay home? And where does this fight go? Uh, the uh, $300 weekly unemployment benefit was uh, extended uh, in the one point nine trillion dollar relief bill for six months that passed obviously through reconciliation will they be able to make this 300 bucks permanent I don't think they're going to be able to make that permanent. And the reason is whether you're a blue state or a red state, you are hearing from your employers that this is an adverse incentive, if you will. And people are not returning to work because they're saying we can make more money staying home and then doing odd jobs and getting cash paid in cash. So you are going to see this battle play out in the states. And in Tennessee, our General Assembly has already voted to restrict these uh, plus ups in benefits and to take charge of this because we have hiring signs out in every single county in this state. People are even paying bonuses if you will come to work. And because we have jobs in small business manufacturing, in entertainment, in tourism, uh, things that are there in retail, Maria, people are desperate to get people back to work. And you're yeah. not going yeah, to see this well received. Yeah, it's interesting. You mentioned Tennessee voting to restrict uh, the the uh, extra benefit. You've got Republican governors in Montana and South Carolina withdrawing from the federal uh, unemployment assistance programs by the end of June. So it appears that this will not only end the three hundred dollar federal supplement, but also negate the CARES Act uh, pandemic programs that extend uh, benefits to gig workers as well and self-employed workers and others. We'll see how that plays out. I got to get your take on this other decision about vaccine intellectual property. Basically, the Biden administration going along with this idea to blow off intellectual property uh, rules. Yesterday on Sunday Morning Futures, I spoke with Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson about this, the administration to end IP protections for the vaccine makers. Here's what he said. Now, Joe Biden wants to blow off all intellectual property rights. Well, first of all, the, President Biden used the COVID crisis to really gain the presidency. And again, the, the press was part and parcel of his entire campaign effort. And I, I guess he just simply can't admit that the reason we have all these vaccines is because of what President Trump and Secretary Azar did in terms of squeezing all the economic inefficiencies out of that vaccination process. Remember, a, a year ago, everybody was saying it was impossible to develop a vaccine in, in less than a few years. And, and the Trump administration did this in less than a year. And so, again, I, I celebrate yeah. that triumph. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's pretty unbelievable that uh, the Biden administration yeah. has this disregard and this willful uh, disregard uh, in, in terms of uh, Operation Warp Speed because they just don't want to give credit to the Trump administration. You are co-sponsoring co a bill, Senator, that would ban Chinese nationals from receiving visas for graduate studies in STEM fields. Tell me about that, as the Chinese Communist Party has been stealing our intellectual property for decades, and now we're about to give it away. Nice. <clears throat> well, and you're right, and I heard your discussion earlier this morning on this topic, Maria. We cannot have this beginning to give away intellectual property when we're at the same time fighting the communist Chinese because they steal our intellectual property. And what we want to do is make certain that American innovators are going to benefit from the innovations, the creations that they come forward with. Now, you know, Senator Johnson talked about regulatory inefficiency or economic inefficiencies. We also have to look at the regulatory inefficiencies that we have squeezed out of this process and say, let's do this faster. At the same time, you mentioned the st uh, secure campus Act that some of my colleagues and I have, which would prohibit some of these Chinese uh, researchers that are applying to work in graduate and postgraduate programs doing STEM research that is federally funded. What they're doing, what we have learned that they are doing, is taking that information back. What they're trying to do is use that information to get ahead of us in certain STEM fields and with certain innovations. Yeah. So we need yeah. to uh, make certain that we're paying more attention to this, that the soft propaganda and espionage that they're trying to conduct, that they're not able to do it. And then we need to send this message that we protect our creators yep. and our innovators, and we are not going to let them steal our intellectual property. Yeah, I know you make a really good point. And of course, we've been spotlighting this now for years. I just point out yes. that when I was at the border a week and a half ago, what I learned was not only is the CCP abusing our visa programs, they're also sending people through the wide open border. One right. agent on the ground told me that he apprehended a group of, uh, of Chinese engineers and scientists, and they paid the cartels $50,000 a head just to come in unnoticed yes. uh, and get into America that way. So the CCP is stealing from us in a big way, not just abusing the uh, visa program, but through the wide open border as well. Senator, it's great to see you. You're and thanks all for your work on all of this. Marsha Blackburn joining us this morning in Tennessee. Stay with us. We'll be right back.